Do you have bad posture from looking down at your computer all day? Are you just unable to get a break from that neck pain? Do you not even have enough space for a keyboard? <coughs> Don't be like her. Make yourself a laptop stand. It's convenient, functional, lightweight, and helps with that back pain. Welcome back, Project Anonymous, and in today's video, we're going to make this laptop stand. So let's get to it. So some requirements we want for this laptop stand is the laptop to be raised to eye level and a little slanted so it's easier to type or use a trackpad and read. Mm -hmm. And then also I want the keyboard to have a slot at the bottom so it saves space on the desk. All right. Let's get to designing. So some measuring tools we're going to use for this laptop stand is a measuring tape. And that'll help us find the width of our laptop stand as well as how high we want it. We're also going to use an angle finder that will help us get the right angle that we wanted at, and then something to measure that angle, a protractor. That angle, or do you want it sharper like this? A little bit. Like that? Right here. Right there? Mm -hmm. Okay, now you're going to move your computer. Okay, tighten that wing nut. That's the loose thing. Okay, now watch this. So this is the angle that we want to get. So we're going to use our protractor here and we lay it on here and look at that. It's about 10, between 10 and 15, so about 12 degrees off 90 degrees. Get it? So 90 degrees would be straight like this and we have it about 12 degrees slanted. Now let's get how wide we want the platform. I think we should go in between here. So about nine inches wide. Okay, nine inch total wide. And then we're gonna have to go at least, we could do eight inches deep. And then show me how high you want it. Here. Just for a wag. About five and a half inches. Five and a half inches up on the back. Okay, we can do that. We can do the math on that. Okay. Okay, so we designed our design in SketchUp because I thought we would be able to print a one-to-one -one scale based off of our design. Well, it turns out you have to have the upgraded version of SketchUp, so not the free version, which we're using, in order to do a one-to-one -one scale. So instead, I just uh, printed out our face at 100% and tried to get it as close to the edge as possible and then measured this out. And this was almost 10 inches in length. And I know that our design was supposed to be eight inches in length. So then I just printed it at 80%. Uh, I zoomed it out 
uh, so that it was like an 80% zoom and it was just shy too short. So I did it again at 81% and we got a perfect one-to-one -one scale now that we can use for our design. Because our whole point in designing it on SketchUp was to print it out one-to-one -one scale, stick it onto a piece of wood, and then just be able to bandsaw it out perfectly um, with the piece of paper. But it wasn't working out for us, so we had to kind of cut some corners here to get it to work. But we got it one-to-one -one scale now, and now we can go put it on some wood. Got all the wood cut out that we need. Now it's time to cut off the stick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick these together and I'm going to glue on this. Let's get to it. All right. Double sided tape. Okay, so we're done cutting out all our wood and what we did here was we put some tape here um, to protect from the double-sided tape completely sticking to the wood so we can later pull it apart and we made sure to not have this double-sided tape where we're going to be cutting out. Now we're just going to peel up this double-sided tape, stick it down and cut it out on the bandsaw. Let's do that. Perfect. Now that I think about it, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a um, Forstner bit to drill out our nice little curve here. And I also, I forgot to transfer over this as part of the design, but I put a curve here and I accidentally deleted it in our design. So I'm going to go ahead and put a Forstner bit through here to create that nice gentle curve here as well. So I'm going to cut those holes out first. Let's do it. Okay. Quick tip. Before you drill out anything, make sure you have a spoiled piece in here that will have some pressure on the bottom so that you don't blow out the bottom of your wood. If we didn't have this here and it was just an open hole, as soon as this Forstner bit cut all the way through, on the other side it would blow out the other end. That's a quick tip. Here we go. 
Now you can go sand those. And then we'll do a nice dry fit to make sure everything fits in where it needs to go. It looks like it's gonna fit nicely. Yeah, it looks like it will be very nice. Cool. Okay, good sand. And level. And give it a little now. absolutely incredible it looks so nice and it is very convenient yeah it turned out very well you know given we just did this with some scrap plywood and did a little design and we got everything to fit on there perfectly and now it makes a little bit more space for you definitely so a lesson we learned after making this project is the free version of SketchUp doesn't allow you to print a one-to-one uh, -one scale printout like we thought we could but uh, I guess you have to upgrade for that feature. So I would suggest doing this, if I were to do this again, I would do it in Fusion 360, where I know I can print out a one by one or one for one scale print. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it if you liked it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn those notifications so you get my every single time we post a video. Stay crafty. And be happy. Bye.